All right, in this video, let's talk about storing information in the browser. It will be probably a lot easier to talk about this without app script environment. And then maybe by the end, I'll move it to app script so you can see how it works together. But for now, let me just leave this alone and open Visual Studio Code. And let's just create an HTML file in here. And I'll just do exclamation tab to just start the main file. I'll call this test, go to the body. And in here, let's just uh, create an input element and a select box. So I'll do input uh, type text and then also select box, which is basically a drop down with some options. And finally, let's just give these things some IDs. And I'm gonna start a script. This is where we're gonna write our JavaScript. So for now, let's just load this to see what this looks like. So basically we have a text box and a dropdown. So there are many reasons you may want to store something in a browser. It could be that it's some user settings. It could be that you just have a long form and you don't want people to lose what they have in their form if they accidentally close the browser and reopen it. It could be for like Google Analytics, you have basically some sort of ID that you use to figure out it's the same person that returned to the website. So there are tons of different reasons to have this, but I'm just gonna go with a simple example. Let's say we have this form and somebody goes in here and chooses orange. Now, if I go ahead and close this, and then we go back and reopen that form, we're gonna lose everything we had in that form. So it might be a good idea to have certain things to stay with the setting that the user last picked. So if the last one that was selected here was orange, maybe the next time if we close this and reopen this, we would like that to just be orange. Now to do something like that, we basically need to store something in the browser. And for that, we're gonna use local storage. So let's just do an example of that. So I'm gonna go back to my code and let's write some code in here. So I'm gonna create a function and this function is gonna run when the page loads. And to do that, we'll just do document add event listener. And when the content loads, we'll just run that function called page load. So now let's say every time we select something in this select box, we'd like to store something in a browser so we can retrieve it later on. And to do that, we'll just assign an event listener to this every time we select a different option. So we'll get this select by its ID. And we'll add an event listener to that. And every time we change that select box, we're gonna run a function. So I'll just call this function after change. So let's go ahead and create that function here. Let's pass an event here so we can get some information about that select box. And here right now, let's just console log e.target.value. So I'm gonna save this. Let's go back to our browser here. So I'm gonna open the console. As you can see, there's nothing happening in here at the moment. 
Let's just put it in here so we can see what happens. So I'll just go ahead and choose Apple. And as you can see, we log Apple. If I go banana, we log banana. So basically we get the value out of this select box. And we do that by basically the E target refers to that element and we get the value out of that element. And we have this E is because this is an event assigned to this change of this particular element. So now we can take that and store it. So the way we can store it, we can take our local storage and in this local storage, we can set and get items. So we're going to start by setting item. And basically we have two pairs. We have the key and the value. So the key is some name, some unique name you want to choose. So I'll just call this fruit. I don't want to call it product because I don't want you to confuse it with this. And then the value I'm going to choose for that is going to be the value we get from here. Let's just comment this and save. We get the icon. We don't have it, which is fine. I'm going to clear that. So right now, what I want to show you, let me actually move this to the bottom. In here, if I go to storage, see, we have our cookies. We're not going to be using cookies. We're going to use local storage, this one. Let's actually click on this. So you can see there's nothing going on in here. Now let's go ahead and pick something in here. So I'm going to choose banana. And then let's just go back and reopen this. So as you can see, I got the key fruit and the value is banana. And let's just change this to orange. And if I go back here, see now it's orange. Now what's going to happen if I close this whole thing and reopen it and go back and take a look at my console under storage, you'll see that this value stays here even after closing the browser and reopening it. So now we should be able to use that value when we actually need one. So the way we can do that, we now have this under this key fruit. So if I go back to my Visual Studio code, what I can say is when the page loads, let's go get the value from the local storage. So we'll do this time instead of set item, we'll do get item. And the item we're trying to get is the one that's called fruit, which we essentially named over here. And at this point, we can check what's happening in this fruit. So let's just console log that fruit. So this is going to happen when the page loads. So if I go back now and reopen our browser and we just refresh this, see it says orange. Now you can see this says apple. But the value here is the value that was stored. It's orange. Now, the other thing we want to test is what happens if we actually try to get something that doesn't exist. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to remove the T, save this, go back and reload the same thing. So as you can see, we get null. So now what we can do, we can say if that fruit exists. So basically, if it's not null, then we can do something. So what we could do, we could grab this element on our page and set the value of that to be the fruit. So if we already have that in our local storage, we'll just make the value of the dropdown that fruit. So if I save this, we go back. See, as I'm reloading this, it's orange. If I change this to banana, if I refresh, it's still banana. If we close this, go back and reopen this, 
it's still banana. So we're grabbing the value and setting that in here automatically the next time. Apple, again, if I reload, it will stay Apple. See, now we're keeping that value. Now we could have done the same sort of thing with this input box as well. So maybe we want to basically store whatever's in this input box. So that basically if we close this and reopen, we'd like that to stay in the box. Now it doesn't stay right now because there's nothing telling it to do so. So again, what we could do, we could create another event for that input box, this one right here, QTY. So I'm gonna copy paste that and do QTY as the event. Well, the ID, not the event. And the event will be input for our input box. And then I'm gonna call it after input as the function. And we're gonna create that function and I'm just gonna copy this function and paste it. And yet again, what we'll do, we'll take the value of that target element and store it and we'll give it a different name, QTY. So now every time we type in the box with every key, which is our input event, we'll basically just grab the value and store it in this QTY. And then we should be able to retrieve that value the same way we did this one. So I can just copy paste this and say, let's try to grab that QTY and we'll name the variable the same. And then we'll say if it exists, so then we'll make our quantity box equal to that. Now you could definitely do some refactoring here to not have to repeat all this code multiple times, but that's not the point of this video anyways. So I'm gonna save this and let's go back and check this out. So I have orange, let's change this to banana. Let's type 77. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Apparently this one too. And let's just reopen this. And as you can see, we got our 77 and banana. If I add another nine, close this, reopen that. We're saving that in our storage and then we're retrieving that. Now, remember one thing that all of this is stored in the current browser. So what that means is that right now, if I'm using Firefox, if I go to Chrome to that same link, it's not gonna be available. Let's test that. So if I copy this, open the Chrome browser and let's just paste it in here. So as you can see, that doesn't load here. Now Chrome will have its own storage. So that means that if I now do something in here and then we close this and reopen it, it will keep that value in Chrome. But again, this is separate for Chrome separate for Firefox, each browser will have its own storage, which also means if you go to a different computer, you know, it's not gonna have it stored. So we're basically storing it in the browser itself for that particular user. So now let's take this logic and apply that same logic here in some sort of web app in our spreadsheet. And for this, I'll just do some sidebar. It really doesn't matter. You're gonna find in a second that I'm gonna be using pretty much the same code. So I'll go under tools and script editor. And some name for this, doesn't matter. So since I'm gonna be doing a sidebar, let's just grab our user interface. And then we'll do a sidebar and that's gonna accept an interface, which will basically be some sort of HTML. So let's create that HTML in here. And 
and this will be creating HTML from index file, which doesn't exist at the moment. So I'll create the file called index. And then I'm just gonna go to my Visual Studio code, copy all of this, exactly the same thing I had before. Go back here and replace this with that. Save this, go back to my code. So that should basically create an HTML and then load it in the sidebar. So let's just change this function and load this. So I'm gonna run. All right, let's go take a look. So as you can see, we got our sidebar. So at this point, if I go and change this to orange, we're gonna close this, and then I'll go ahead and reload that sidebar. And as you can see, it stayed orange. So if I change this to 87 and this banana, close the sidebar, we rerun this function. The same way it works. So as you can see, we're storing this information again in our local storage in a browser and exactly the same way we can just use that to basically store these things in this form. And that should do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.